Afternoon all. Today I thought I'd do a tear down, take something apart, and I've chosen this. It's the Casio TV30 liquid crystal black and white, unfortunately, TV from, oh, I don't know, the 1980s? I can't remember whether this came out before or after the Sinclair Microvision, um, but certainly these products were incredibly futuristic back then. And in fact, a few years before, dreamed about, let me show you something. This is a Brooke Bond Picture Cards Inventors and Inventions book uh, from 1975, 8P this was. Uh, there it is, 1975. And if we whiz forwards, to, uh, in fact, the very last card in the book. Oh, I think all the cards are in here. Uh, yes, there's Volta and Galvani. But anyway, let's go right to the end. And there's a card here, a peep into the future. And look what they've got, a pocket size color TV. And it says here, a cheap, truly pocket sized color TV set. Well, it wasn't long before these things actually came along. And of course, now they're gone again. I'm fairly certain this still works. Let's have a look at what we've got. The uh, pouch, instruction manual, and the TV. So I'm going to power it up, but there is a bit of a problem, and that is that um, analog TV transmissions are no longer being sent out. So we're not actually going to receive anything, but let's put some batteries in it. This particular TV works on the principle of light coming through the LCD and then bouncing off this mirror at the bottom and you view it through the mirror. Uh, that's the antenna casting a shadow. And you can see that the uh, tuning indicator is doing an auto scan, but of course it's not finding any TV channels because there aren't any. So what we need is an analog TV transmitter. Well, an old video recorder makes an analog TV transfer the modulator output and then attach that to the TV. So I've just put a crop clip into the uh, Belling Lee output and stuck that onto the antenna. Let's start the video going and see what it's like. And the contrast on this thing was always really, really bad. Let's turn the volume up. It's almost impossible to work out what's actually on the screen. You can just about make out that that's an aeroplane. I think this is an old holiday video. But it's pretty awful, isn't it? The contrast was terrible. The sensitivity of the receiver was bad. It, it never seemed to tune in properly. There's always noise on the audio track. Just never very good. That's about the best you could hope to get from it. So I'm thinking this could be quite therapeutic, really, to uh, finally take this thing apart. I've no intention of putting it back together again, so it's very much a one-way teardown. Okay, screws. Ah, oh, yes, there are a few. So this big one here seems to hold the antenna in, because that comes out. Now let's take those two little ones off. There's one here inside the battery compartment. Let's take that out. Now is this going to come apart? Yeah. Does seem to be. Oh, yeah. There's not a lot in there, is there? So let's prise the lid off this tin can. Wow. What a lot of inductors in there. All air cord inductors as well. I was expecting to see a lot of um, ferrite tuning inductors like these, but no, they're all air cord. I don't know a lot about RF, but that looks right messy. Let's get a close-up. Now, curiously, a lot of these inductors seem to be kind of split uh, at a certain point, and part of it sort of bent over and moved away from the other part. I wonder if that's a technique for tuning them. They've all got these kind of splits in them where it looks like they've been levered apart. don't know. It's most peculiar. I wasn't expecting this at all. This is a really odd construction. I presume that's all done by hand and someone sticks a screwdriver in there and levers these inductors apart to get the right inductance. Or maybe I've got that completely wrong. I don't know. 
Now all these wires here go to two sockets in the end which are a DC in jack and another jack which was obviously intended for some sort of backlight which I presume clipped over the back of here so that you could uh, view this thing instead of with daylight coming through it you could view it with uh, some sort of backlit thing. Uh, I think I'm just going to cut all these because I'm not intending to keep this. Okay there's some stuff on the back of that board. Let's have a quick look at that. Once I've cut all these wires. There are a lot of these uh, trimmers on here. I assume they're capacitors. They don't seem to have end stops. They seem to just turn indefinitely. So I don't think they're pots. Well, they might be pots because they've got possibly three terminals. Don't know. Can't work that one out. They're a bit strange. Never seen anything like that before. So now I'm taking the cover off this on off switch thing, which is quite elaborate. The on off switch is implemented as tracks on a PCB. Let's take these large screws out that are holding the speaker in. What's that? Oh yes, it's the rubber membrane thing for the up and down buttons for the tuning. Okay, that's all out. So now just the uh, LCD. So what's this under here? Ah, presumably LCD driver chip. And then there's a big long edge connector that was obviously pressed onto that and then that must go up to the LCD but that's the driver M6270 okay let's actually go into the liquid crystal display now a oh, couple more screws up there uh, this brown thing here is actually the back of the mirror uh, which is just stuck into the bottom but there's an, a rod running all the way through here which I think was pushed in through this hole which has a screw in it and of course now that that's threaded the rod really doesn't want to come out this is very um, translucent this LCD you can see my fingers through it quite clearly it obviously doesn't go uh, particularly black or dark because uh, as I say this thing never had very good contrast right the rods now mostly out so let's pull that all the way out and then this should come apart and now hopefully I can remove the screws holding the front on the LCD and take that apart. So as I say, the LCD is strangely transparent. You can actually see the lines of my cutting mat through it uh, in this angle. So let's undo these screws now. Well, that's interesting. The uh, LCD is completely transparent. I mean, it's totally clear. Wasn't expecting that at all. I was expecting it to, well, I don't know what I was expecting, but yeah, that's a completely clear liquid crystal. Oof, funny things happen if I try and bend it. I can see it patterning or darkening, but I must admit I wasn't expecting it to be as clear as that. How strange. So let's get all this metal work off here. Hmm, that's interesting, this is all kind of folded up. Oh, there are chips in here. Lots and lots of driver chips driving all the uh, segments, rows and columns. There must be more driver chips in here, I'm guessing. K64 they're called. Let's try and open that up. Well, this is certainly never going to work again. Um, yes, there are three row driver chips here, uh, which seem to have fewer connections on, and then three column driver chips. There's a lot of stuff in here. Quite elaborate, that. So there it is all opened out. We've got these three chips here. This uh, is a mass, if I get in a bit closer, it's just a mass of um, individual wires running up to all the columns of the LCD. And then here there's uh, these three chips and they all are taken off this L-shaped PCB. Let's come out again. This L-shaped PCB here, which has the main connector that runs or ran back to uh, this edge connector on this driver chip. Yeah, interesting construction. Well, that'll certainly never work again. I think that's probably cured me of my uh, tendency to hoard this particular item. That's all going in the bin. So that was my one-way teardown of the uh, Casio TV30. Never really worked very well in the first place. Certainly won't work now. Cheerio!